Welcome back to the garage. Today I'm working on a small side project. This will be a one video project. It will not be a series. Uh, and today I would like to make uh, an inline water heater. And so I have already gone to the hardware store and picked up a bunch of little pieces here. As you can see, I have my 1500 watt, 120 volt heating element. Uh, this is just for reference. I actually have a 2000 watt, uh, 120 volt element coming. The idea here is to uh, basically build uh, a little tube around this heating element and be able to circulate water past it, uh, kind of like an inline water heater. Uh, the uh, real use case for this would actually be my soaking tank. So the reason that I chose to use inch and a quarter uh, is you can see here uh, the heating element fits uh, very easily through the inch and a quarter fittings. That's not an issue. In fact, uh, this part of the heating element would even fit through a one inch uh, fitting. It gets a little tight when it comes to the actual tube though because uh, the one inch inside diameter is essentially the same measurement as the outside of the heating element. So there'd be no space for water to circulate around the element properly. So that's why I went with the inch and a quarter. It fits through without any issues. As you can see there, once this is centered in there, there will be plenty of space for water to circulate around. Now, taking a look at the heating element, this is a threaded water heater element. Uh, you can also buy a bolt-on type, uh, but the threaded one works well. Uh, there is something that you must be aware of if you're trying to use a threaded uh, water heating element and the thing is these are a straight thread which is different from a, a pipe taper. So to be able to thread this heating element into a pipe taper you have to actually chase the threads uh, so that they don't uh, bind up as you thread the element into the fitting and so to do that I made my own little uh, cheap thread chase and all you need to do is take a reducer so this is a, th uh, one, a one inch NPT that's national pipe taper outside three quarter uh, inside doesn't really matter what the inside is but you take your grinder and you just cut a slit in there and basically as you thread this fitting inside of that one the cut edge of this fitting where you use the grinder to cut acts as a thread chase and it will actually clean up threads really well so rather than spending you know 50 60 70 100 dollars on a straight uh, thread tap you can get away with just using this a little bit of oil to help lubricate the cutting and uh, it works really well so I've already done that to this, this fitting. like I said the straight thread of the uh, water heating element is already seated into this uh, inch and a quarter to one inch adapter. There is an o-ring there which actually serves the uh, sealing uh, purpose for the water heating element so there's nothing to do there. But what we do need to do is uh, use some uh, Teflon tape to uh, seal up the rest of these threads. We'll go ahead and put uh, Teflon on all of the threads for this little water heater and then uh, begin to assemble it. Okay, so we have the basic body of the inline water heater assembled. Before I go and uh, thread this uh, adapter with the water heater element attached to it, I would like to uh, be able to have this part of the water heater enclosed in an electrical box. So my idea here is to Put, this is an inch and a quarter uh, electrical conduit locking ring so put that onto there punch out a hole in this electrical box and feed this through uh, that and then finally thread this whole assembly into the end of the tube and then basically what we should have is an enclosed electrical compartment kind of sitting like that with the uh, connections for the element enclosed. I have put the locking ring onto the adapter and we have our uh, thread uh, 
sealing tape. And so now what we should be able to do, there we are, that is through there. And that is how we will enclose our electrical connections for this. Okay, I'd say we have done uh, fairly well so far. So we have the uh, element, it is uh, enclosed in this electrical box that turned out really nice. And uh, the locking ring is holding it basically fixed to the, uh, the heater tube. It's uh, nice and flush here. Uh, and you can see, I'm gonna switch here. Can we see, there's the heating element inside. I haven't put the end plug on yet, but you can see that it is nicely centered within there. And uh, as we circulate water through, it should pick up heat uh, pretty quickly. All right, so this is uh, the new mock-up for the uh, inline electric water heater. And uh, it's just mocked up right now. The last time that we were uh, tinkering with this, we had a T and then there was another T at this side of uh, the heater portion. And so I got rid of that. I wanted to actually put uh, the thermal sensor uh, further away from the water heater section. So I uh, added a T down there. And so I, I haven't quite decided whether I want to keep it there or if I can maybe just move it over to here. I need this coupler here, and so by adding the T, it probably wouldn't be uh, the end of the world to have that right in line here. Might actually clean it up a little bit, but uh, yeah, everything's coming together quite well, so this is kind of the plan overall. I'd have uh, a box that's gonna be mounted up here, and that will be uh, the PID controller that will control the actual uh, heating element, and uh, the circulating pump, I think, is just going to remain on uh, continuously just to uh, keep the tank uh, filtered and uh, in circulation so the water stays somewhat clean. So, yeah, this is it for now. Well, we are very close to wrapping up the inline water heater for the soaking tank. It's been uh, a little bit of a slow go uh, getting parts and uh, getting everything brought in if you... Uh, Look at my messy, messy workbench here. You can see that the uh, control box is nearly done. Uh, I did get the switches installed. Uh, those came the day before yesterday. And then we have breakers. So we have a uh, five amp breaker, which is going to control the pump and just provide power to the PID controller. And then we have a main uh, 20 amp breaker, which should be plenty for basically limiting the current for the whole system. Uh, the breaker for the circuit, the RV plug, is actually 30 amps. There is no reason to have 30 amps uh, functioning in this box here, so uh, better safe than sorry. Just kind of limit as to uh, what you really need. So we're going to get these two breakers installed, uh, get the final wiring finished up, and uh, get the control box and the heater, everything mounted onto the side of the tub, and uh, maybe even start to look at a little bit of a box to enclose it just to keep everything uh, protected and out of the weather. Okay, so our box is complete. We have uh, a 20 amp breaker, a five amp breaker, and the first switch here basically uh, controls power to the entire box, so off turns everything off. The second switch is uh, strictly for uh, interrupting power to the heater, so you can still run the pump and still run the temperature sensor with the heater off. Uh, that would be more for maintenance. The reason I have um, the main switch that shuts everything off and the main breaker that shuts everything off is uh, you do not want a scenario where uh, the heater is running without uh, the pump running. So trying to uh, configure this in such a way that there's little opportunity for that to happen. So yes, the pump could get unplugged or the pump could fail, uh, that would be a no bueno situation. The, uh, the heater would obviously overheat and uh, yeah, you'd have a little bit of a catastrophic failure. But uh, barring that, I don't see any reason why you would have uh, the pump not running while the heater's on. So this is done. I am going to focus on getting the inline heater uh, basically uh, installed for the final time. So right now, on the bench here, it's just a pile of parts. So I'm going to fit everything together with uh, Teflon thread tape, uh, get everything uh, glued together as well, and get it ready for the final installation here.
Alrighty, our inline water heater is done and ready to be tested. I have everything connected uh, in here, as you can see, and uh, I have the thermo uh, sensor also in place. So there we go. That is looking pretty good. Uh, and now to take you through, the reason I went with um, just keeping this 120 volts, but uh, going with a, a 30 amp RV outlet is, uh, I happen to have, like I said, I think previously, that I have a RV plug on the side of the house. It is GFCI protected. I have a RV plug out at the cottage. It is also GFCI protected. So this is really the best of, uh, of you know, solution for what I could come up with. Uh, and the neat thing about the RV plug is I could, <clears throat> if I really had to, I could use this uh, 15 amp RV plug adapter. Now, yes, the 2000 watt uh, heating element would not be kosher with, uh, with this plug, but all I would need to do is swap out that heating element with a 1500 watt element and we would be good to go. So uh, this is a real possibility. If you don't have uh, a 30 amp RV plug, you can go to uh, just a standard 15 amp uh, receptacle. The other neat thing is that I have this beautifully long uh, 10-3 RV extension cable. So when I am running the uh, soaking tub uh, off of the RV plug, I can get this. Uh, this is a 35-foot cord, so that's a good chunk of cable. Get it uh, basically where I want to have the, uh, the tub set up. So it uh, provides quite a bit of flexibility, I think, overall compared to going the 240 volt route, uh, you're very limited to where you can plug it in. Uh, breakers, GFCI breakers are incredibly expensive. So uh, setting up plugs in various locations to be able to accommodate a 240 volt tub, uh, it's a, a real pain in the butt. And so, yeah, this is really, I think the, uh, the most flexible solution overall. So um, yeah, I, I hope you enjoyed this build. It did carry on a little bit longer than I had anticipated, but uh, I think it's a, a worthwhile uh, opportunity to see how you can kind of put something together. Uh, overall, I would say uh, materials, uh, pump was about $100. The filter, I did have that on hand, but they are uh, a little pricey. Uh, I think they sell for probably around $50 or $60 now. The heating element, the 2000 watt element was uh, 25 bucks off of Amazon. The uh, the enclosure itself was uh, another 35 bucks. The temperature controller with the SSR, that was, I think, 30 bucks. Uh, the switches, so I bought these uh, actually in a five pack, so I've only used two out of the five. And same for the uh, breaker, so I've only used two out of the five there, but each of those five packs was uh, about $20 each. So we're probably in the 250 range uh, overall to get this set up, which I would say is, uh, it's quite reasonable. Um, I didn't want to buy a, a manufactured spa pack. Those run, oh, easily eight or nine hundred dollars just to, to get into them. So I think this uh, gives me the best of uh, everything I could want. And uh, yeah, for now, uh, I would like to say thanks for watching, and uh, don't forget to subscribe. <laughs>